So hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on whether you are uh, here in person or watching the stream remotely. Uh, welcome to my talk. Uh, my name is Dabarshi, you can call me Rishi. I will be talking about the recent updates in Toolbox and various thoughts going forward. I have a blog and you can reach me via email and various uh, chat networks like Matrix. Um, so I work in the Red Hat Display Systems team, formerly the desktop team. Um, I've been contributing to Fedora for a while, s like 17 years or so, and uh, per and these days I'm particularly focused on uh, Fedora Silverblue and uh, Workstation. I'm also a long-time GNOME contributor and have uh, worked on all many parts of the stack. Um, so I'm going to assume that uh, you n all of you already know uh, what Toolbox is. If not, then you can head over to the website. Uh, it has some introductory text. And uh, I've also given some talks over the years. You can uh, find them linked over th on from, the, from the website. And other people have written articles. So that should get you oriented. Um, so let's dive right in. We don't have a lot of time. And I overestimated, I underestimated the number of slides. And uh, yeah, so not everything that I will talk about today is done by me. Uh, so I will try to uh, mention the relevant people when possible. Uh, so first of all, uh, we got a big update to the website. There is uh, even more pixel art now, um, and uh, hopefully a lot more other useful content. But uh, pixel art is always more useful. And this is mostly thanks due to Jakub Steiner, or GMAC. Some of us know him as. Uh, we also are now on uh, Mastodon and Fediverse, uh, because Twitter is a dying thing. So you can follow us there. And so next. Uh, so I finally got myself uh, like uh, some NVIDIA hardware, and now we have uh, enabled the proprietary NVIDIA driver to work inside toolbox containers, which is something uh, has been a request for a long time. You can see it from the like the lower numbered issue there, three digits. Uh, and uh, if you just update the the toolbox binary, it should just work. There is no need for any special flag or anything. It, your, your existing containers, old, new, whatever, should just work. And uh, yeah, but you just have to up restart the container, which you always have to do anyway when you update the, the toolbox binary. Uh, which means, uh, yes, artificial intelligence hardware acceleration. I was told to put in these four words, so I did, and uh, that's the obligatory AI reference. So uh, next is, uh, we also made the enter command faster. This is how you usually enter the container or use it. And since toolbox containers are long-lived, they're typically created once and used several times. It's kind of a very often used command, and people uh, want it to be as fast as possible. So, so depending on which uh, code path you are hitting, the f you either will see that it's a second faster from you hitting enter to to getting the prompt, or you will have two less Podman invocations, which is also kind of usually uh, makes a difference. And so, yeah, this just comes from being able to shed some past baggage that we no longer need. And that led to quite a significant improvement. And then going forward, next is uh, there was this big uh, f change for Fedora 39. That's a quote from the change. Uh, uh, Up-to-date Fedora Toolbox OCI images must be published as release blocking deliver deliverables. And there must be release blocking test criteria to ensure useful and usable RPMs. Uh, so the idea is that uh, to improve the quality of the toolbox environments on Fedora and make them as good or reliable or stable as like running Bash or ZShell directly on the host. And, and the problem is that toolbox integrates with too many parts of the OS, like, uh, and so it's vulnerable to changes or bugs in any part of the OS to the extent that it's kind of difficult for a single person or even a small team of toolbox contributors to just keep up with all the change happening everywhere. So just a few examples from recent times that have actually led to breakage is like, for example, bugs in Fuse, preventing RPMs with file capabilities from being installed, or I don't know, bound, bind mounts created by toolbox, preventing RPMs with this uh, percentage ATTR, uh, you know, markup from getting installed, which are quite a few, or causing system detem files to throw errors, or changes in the Kerberos stack causing breakage, or, you know, even simple things like spin can stop working if you change the sysctl config, or, 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 or changes in Mutter. Uh, breaking graphical apps because of some changes in the GNOME release. So basically, it needs more formal testing. Um, and also, Toolbox has two parts, an, uh, an image and an RPM. And then uh, also, uh, the image can go stale. Like, for example, recently in Fedora 38, there were big changes in RPM's GPG stack. 
and so the images were stale for quite a long time and uh, which led to like uh, quite uh, like making the whole thing unusable in rawhide because somebody just forgot to update the images or just rebuild them so as a solution to all this since fedora 39 the images are built by nightly composers and they are uh, the source of the image is defined in this fedora kickstarts or punji fedora and they're built by this thing called image factory so that means they are no longer defined as Docker file. They are no longer built by OpenShift build service. This OpenShift build service, we have a really old uh, instance on Fedora, which is just horrible to maintain. I think it was even using Fedora 34 for something. So that's good. And uh, and s another change is that it, the images are no longer layered images. They are no longer layered on top of the Fedora image. They are just their own standalone images, which means that we no longer need to unminimize the Fedora image because the Fedora image is minimized, it's optimized for deploying server service, server side services like no locales and no documentation, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we don't have to do fight all the packages to get it undone. And so the downsides of all this is that uh, uh, the upside is of course that it's uh, the the images are built just like all your ISOs are built, everything that you use as a release. Uh, so they are kept in sync, tested, and everything. And but the negatives is that the, the, the having them as Docker file was just easier to integrate into upstream CI. You just had them and ran Podman build and done, and you can test the image. And uh, the problem is that this new thing called Image Factory is also not really new. It's also really weakly maintained, and it also comes with it. Hence, it's considered uncool. And uh, and the rel images, which are a downstream of Fedora, they are still defined as Docker files. So it's kind of like different things, uh, different tool sets. So that's why in Fedora 40, we changed everything again. It says uh, Fedora Cloud ed Edition images will be built with Kiwi. And if you, it, it looks like it's only for the Vagrant, Azure, a AWS, GCP, all those images for cloud hosts. But if you pay attention closely, you will see that it also covers the OCI images or the Fedora Toolbox images. And this was something that David Duncan and Neil Gompa from Fedora Cloud was pushing. And they had a, a workshop about QE yesterday, I think. Uh, so now the images are now uh, described in this Fedora Kiwi descriptions thing, and they're now built with Kiwi, so they, we changed the whole thing again. So no more Fedora Kickstarts, no more Fungi, no more Image Factory, so like quite a lot of churn in two successive releases. And but it's still built as a separate base image, no more layered images, so those parts are the same. It's just the tooling has changed. And uh, it solves two of the problems that we introduced with this image factory thing, that, uh, that, it's, that it was difficult to integrate for upstream CI, that this Kiwi thing is easier, you just do DNF install Kiwis, and uh, the Kiwi description is an XML file, not a Docker file, not just an XML file. And, and Kiwi is very well maintained, blah, and uh, while there are uh, dozens of image building tools these days, at least relative to Image Factory and, uh, open, and the very old OpenShift build service, this is a lot better place to be in. And but yeah, the real the real whole thing story is different, so it's still Docker file. So next, uh, we added support for various operating systems outside the Fedora family. So you do toolbox create dash dash distro, and so right now we have Arch Linux and Ubuntu. And this was done by these three people, Yevgen, Martin, and Timothy. Uh, so the thing is that it's the problem is that it's really hard to do run CI on any kind of non-Ubuntu hosts, which makes it really difficult to add um, more and more, really claim to support more and more uh, uh, distros. So for, so for Fedora, the for, for the Fedora family, we have this thing called Software Factory, because the thing is that since we are a container tool, we need hosts, not a container environment for CI. So for Ubuntu, you get it from GitHub, but everything else it seems kind of really impossible. And it's really impossible to provide first-class support without upstream CI because the, the, the test metrics just explodes. You know, with the, every combination of host and image combination just combinatorially explodes. And so, uh, yeah, so if you want us to add more, if we really need runners for Arch Linux and Debian and to run all these tests that we keep adding. So next up, we have... Uh, this thing called a new terminal application, it's called, it's called Tixis. Uh, it's, a, it's a new terminal application that's written with uh, uh, GTK4 and VTE, VTE, and it offers a much better user experience when using toolbox containers. Um, so those are the, the links there. It's uh, available from FlatHub and uh, so on. So, so just like, us, and this is done by uh, Christian Hergert. Um, so just like uh, GNOME Builder, uh, you can think of GNOME Builder as a container-native IDE. Uh, uh, 
you can think of Dixis as a container native terminal emulator. What it means is that it, it's, it's uh, designed to be primarily distributed and installed as a flat pack container. And it expects or wants to give a first class experience to people who are running their interactive command line environment inside another container. Uh, which does come with its challenges because there are like things like uh, this, this function tc get pgrp which gets you the, ac the foreground process group for the terminal, like basically the process group that you're interacting with. You can no longer uh, get it by calling this function and the, uh, the file descriptor because uh, Podman creates um, nested PTYs and, and this is how you have simple things like uh, we make the, 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 the window title re uh, re reflect the current application or when you close the terminal window with, with something running, it gives you this warning that something is running. So it does create challenges and uh, you have to come up with ways to solve it. So next, uh, we now have better errors than inside when containers fail to start, which happens often enough from bug reports. For, uh, for it's always the user's fault, but it does happen. <laughs> Never my fault. Uh, but uh, but yeah, like you you normally would have to fiddle with these Podman logs or Podman start, and uh, now you just get it there because it just saves one round trip at least on the bug tracker. Like you have to tell the person to run this special command, and then uh, and over time they learn it. But it's just easier if it just it's, it's, if it's just there. So uh, quickly, some uh, future plans. They are not really exhaustive. You have to look at the list of PRs and issues for the full list, but just something off the top of my head. So, so we are considering like addressing s some of the use cases that Podman SH uh, has come up with, uh, like uh, creating containers defined in a quadlet file, like a static quadlet file that when you log in or you SSH in, systemd will just create and run the container for you. Uh, and these are usually a lot more restricted and so on, not as open as uh, Toolbox usually is because uh, of some really paranoid people. And then, uh, uh, yeah, custom CA certificates from your host because CA certificate, nobody knows how to install them, but they're terribly de important and nothing works without them. So, yeah. It's, and then uh, shims for well-known host binaries like, you know, Flatpak, Podman, RPM OS3, which make no sense to use inside the container, but if you're spending so much time inside the container, you kind of have this uh, mental uh, cognitive burden that this needs to be outside, that needs to be inside. Uh, so something to s uh, reduce that barrier. And then uh, a way to list uh, supported images because uh, with every release when you uh, claim to support more and more distros or whatnot, like uh, easy way for users to discover it on their own. Like we do have uh, tab completion, but uh, something maybe a bit more explicit and it's useful and it's useful for uh, uh, both human users and things like cockpit because they uh, want to programmatically query it somehow uh, offer it. And then finally, uh, uh, a nice dot zero release because our version number has become really uh, unmanageable. And, and that's it. <laughs> I guess we have a minute for questions. Like, sorry for going really fast because uh, I kind of un <laughs> yeah. I had one question there. Can we get support to export application or desktop entry? Yeah, like it's still have this. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think he asked uh, whether we can get support for exporting applications as uh, desktop files, right? Yeah, I know, like, uh, this is something that a lot of people want, but uh, I'm a little bit afraid that uh, that's where we get into flat pack territory and, uh, and the story kind of gets uh, confusing. Like, if you can start shipping applications that nicely integrate with the desktop as, uh, as, as toolbox containers, then uh, uh, why do you need flat pack? And, uh, and uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it just, <laughs> yeah. So you had a question? Yeah, Milan. Oh, okay. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you for coming to the talk.